Hello, everyone. Uh, this is a Friday edition of Daily Thunder, and uh, usually I'm going to be with Nathan Johnson. And instead, I have this strange character uh, next to me. Uh, his name is Rich Garnot. Uh, Rich, uh, I don't know if people know exactly how special you are, but uh, <laughs> I've brought you into the studio, which is a big statement already. Thanks for uh, being with us. It's an honor to be here. Thanks for having me. So give us a quick uh, introduction to how in the world you got here. What are you doing here? Uh, I, I, I'm i fascinated to hear the story. How in the world did Rich Garnot <laughs> not just get in the studio, but get to Ellerslie right now? It's an amazing story. We were uh, we were at uh, Lamplighter in upstate New York. Uh -huh. <clears throat> you were there as a, as a keynote speaker, and God had our paths cross and uh, began to share with you the, the vision and the passion that God has given our family for musical theater to be used um, to impact for the kingdom of God. Yeah. And that's why we're here. Well, you that said, triggered something inside come of here. me, uh, because my kids <clears throat> were signed up for a musical theater camp last summer. Of course, COVID <laughs> did it in. And so I remember when you said musical theater, I'm like, huh, okay, wait a minute. Talk, tell, tell me more about this. Of course, Lamplighters, you know, for those of you that are familiar with lamplighters, it's it's the arts. It's but the right. arts used for the glory of God, and I think you and I have a a similar passion on that. We both love the artistic expressions of things, and though I'm going to be typically classified as the preacher, which is very unartistic, right? To be a preacher, <laughs> still I want to bring the artistic in the expression, everything from the use of words. <clears throat> but you, your f whole family is extremely intriguing to me because every single one of you seems built for the stage. Like you just do extremely well <laughs> in front of people. When you get up on one of those stages, it's just like, who are these people? They're extremely talented. But you are doing a production called Pilgrim, mm -hmm. and that is derived from Pilgrim's <clears throat> Progress, but it's a musical. And I've, I've poked my head in on some of the rehearsals, right? And... I am so amazed at the quality of this, but hmm. I'd just like you to sort of set the stage. <clears throat> what gets you into doing this musical? Mm -hmm. Of course, you're coming to Ellerslie for the next two weeks and you're going to be doing this, but it's yes. a big production. Like you guys have actually changed our chapel. Yes. You have all sorts of lighting <laughs> and, and all sorts of gizmos in there. We have an entire orchestra area uh, for our musicians. I mean, it's like elaborate. So. Fill us in. Give us the backdrop of why you do this, what you're doing here in Windsor. Yeah, well, our family is passionate about musical theater. We love musical theater. Um, we're also passionate about the gospel. Seeing those two things come together to be able to present something that's going to have an impact on people's lives is very exciting to us. Um, as far as the arts, there's music, there's movies, there's uh, theater. Um, obviously, we all know that that uh, our enemy, uh, Satan, tries to capitalize on those and, and use them for, for his glory instead of yep. God's glory. And so we look at <clears throat> what music, musical theater has to offer in Broadway and other things. There's really not much there of substance. Yep. There's entertainment, there's amusement, yep. but there's not change for the kingdom. Yeah. And so as we as a family have looked at different things to do, um, God allowed us to come across this musical pilgrim, and we've worked with the writers to adapt and, and shift and add and change some things for what it is we felt like God put on our heart. And our, our aim, our goal is to do high quality musical theater that has a direct impact. We've been able to do this show a couple of times. Uh, in West Michigan, where, where we're from, and just the testimonies coming back over and over again of salvation and transformed lives um, is really what motivates us. Yeah. That's what we're about. And I can see it, too. You know, I've, I've poked my head in. Uh, mm -hmm. Hudson and Abby have small roles, but it's sort of integrated them into this process. So I get to poke my head. And of course, it's on Ellerslie's campus, right? So we have, right. about, what, about 80 of you guys teaming around yes. uh, constantly, which has been extremely fun. I mean, you guys are <laughs> such a delightful group. We have a lot of laughter already. But I've poked my head in on a few things. And uh, so I saw like the uh, Apollyon Christian mm -hmm. battle. And yes. wow. Uh, first of all, uh, Adam... Brat, is that how you say? Brat, yeah. Brat, okay. Uh, <clears throat> who I want to interview as well. Uh, yeah. He is, he's playing Christian. What a talent. Yes. Uh, can you even speak to that? Like the talent level you have for this is like, where did you get these people from? We're very blessed. And that, that's, that's the thing is that when, when this talent comes up, 
um, through high school and through college, where do they have to go? Yeah. That's part of what God's put on us as a yeah. Rise Collective Theater is yeah. to, to be a place, hopefully uh, professionally, yeah. where some of this talent can can use their, their gifts yeah. for the kingdom. Um, but yes, you, you got to poke your head in at a, at a very intense moment of the show. <laughs> and, and really, the, the power of the show is that the audience gets to see not only Christian walk through his life yeah. um, with all the challenges and battles and difficulties, but you get to see the king always by his side. So as an audience member, you get to see both the spiritual and the physical take yeah. place even though Christian doesn't get to see the king by his side, yeah. doesn't get to see the angels attending to yeah. him um, and the spiritual battle that's going on around him. But as an audience member, yeah. you get to see it and you begin to recognize what is going yeah. on in this life. Especially in those moments, and I think this is one of the things that stood out to me in the, the brief little segments I've been able to get in, are at those moments where as Christians, we oftentimes feel like, where is God? In this, yes. there's this, there's this overlapping to say, well, he's right there. Yes, and I think it's a profound picture, and it adds a luster to the story of Pilgrim's Progress that I think is missing in the in just the textual version. Hmm. And because the textual version is almost like deep theology, it's it's profound, but right. it doesn't overlap how he's like Christian and Christiana are still going to be married. But he's going on a different journey than she is. She's still right. in the city of destruction, but he's going on a journey, but they're still married. And that's why this sort of creates this extra luster layer of how Christian's life with the king. It's not just that he's going to find the king. It's that the king is with him the entire while. And I really like that perspective of how you're bringing that out. Yes. So let's talk about uh, one of the key reasons why this is significant right now. And I think one of the, hmm. the bonding points that we have is both of us are passionate to share the gospel with a lost and dying generation. And our culture yes. is not heading upward. It seems to be heading downward at a very fast pace. And adding <clears throat> masks and social distancing is not enabling the evangelist. Right. Uh, it, it seems directly opposed to the ability to reach people in an effective way. So talk about how this is like a creative way in that God can be using right now to actually reach the hearts of those that are unbelieving. Absolutely. I actually believe this is one of the most profound, impactful ways to share the gospel. Yeah. When you see something live yeah. take place in front of you with high quality, with good deep music, with dance and choreography and lights, um, there's something that the Spirit of God does in the emotion of the of the human framework yeah. that responds to that. Yeah. Um, when we did this pre-COVID, um, you know, we in West Michigan had over 900 people at our last performance and standing room only, and and people weeping in tears. And and after COVID, the question is, okay, God, what do we do yeah. now? Yeah. We can't go to the normal theater and have thousands of people come. And so we just opened our hands before him and said, what would you like us to do? Yeah. Um, Arise Collective Theater comes from Isaiah 60, verse 1 and 2, which is, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And then verse 2, which we didn't know until... Uh, until after COVID, but the verse two is, for behold, darkness shall cover the earth mm. and thick darkness the peoples, mm. but the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will be seen in, upon you. Amen. And so that's what we said to, to the Lord is, is what would you like us to do? And then he had us come across your path mm -hmm. and we're starting to see, okay, uh, maybe this is an opportunity where we go wherever he's called us to do, a small yeah. church here, a small ministry here, uh, maybe even a flash mob sort of a thing in a park. Um, but yeah. God put on our hearts, prepare for where he's going to call us. Yeah. We needed to buy and invest in all of our sound, all mm -hmm. of our lighting, our screens, our travel costs, all of this. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've invested into what he belie we mm -hmm. believe he is calling mm -hmm. us to, and that's what we're excited about. This is sort of our maiden voyage of wherever he calls us to yeah. go. Well, the, the quality and, and, you know, just because you know, there's people out there that, you know, they think of a, 
a theater production or they mm. think of a church play. Sure. Yep. And of, oftentimes everyone's <clears throat> perception of that is a little lower than what you're aiming for. And right. so and it's not a direct apple to apple comparison, but Sight and Sound Theater, mm. which is something my family is very familiar with and have loved. You know, yes. we've seen it. We've gone out to Lancaster and also to uh, Branson. Likewise. Yes. And seen multiple shows. Love it. Mm -hmm. Very Christ centered. So it is like one of the like when someone like Hudson or Abby, my, my kids, think of getting into musical theater, they're like, well, it's the only thing we know of. Right. So this creates, it's not an apple to apple comparison because what you're doing is different. You're not just going through a story of the Bible, you're going through Pilgrim. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the quality level, if, if I could e e express it that way, they aim for excellence. And I'd say that's a, that's a, that is an apple to apple comparison. You are aiming for excellence, even though the way you're doing it is going to be a different style. Sure. Uh, it is, it's beautiful. It's hmm. fantastic. The stage is just extraordinary. Everything that you're doing, I mean, to make this mobile, I mean, I can't even imagine, <laughs> uh, especially in mobile in Ellerslie. It's not like you're in some huge venue in Denver, Colorado, right. you know, that's built for right. Broadway musicals. You're having to retrofit a chapel for this. So if any of you are out there and are in a position like I am, like say you're a church pastor or something, I would love you to see this. We need to get you hmm. in touch with Rich because you guys are getting this professionally filmed even while you're here. Correct. So yep. that people can get a hint of what this is and bring it potentially even to their church. Absolutely. Wouldn't that be neat? We're willing uh, to go wherever God calls us. Because you have to make a decision. Are you going to do something like in Branson or, you know, like Sight and Sound does, get a theater and just always have it open? Or are you going to take this around. Those are, you know, key decisions where you're going to need wisdom. Uh, we are praying into that yeah. even even right now. Yeah. And uh, and our heart is, you know, to to create an experience that's high quality but also free. We want people yeah. to be able to come, come again. Yeah. Multiple testimonies have come back of people that have seen it 3, 4, 5 nights in a row. Yeah. And the impact just is is deeper and deeper. And yeah. you can't do that at Sight and Sound. Sight and Sound, that would break the bank. That is challenging. <laughs> uh, we love Sight and Sound. I mean, they're, what they do is incredible. This is different, but I yeah. like how you said yeah. we're still aiming for the, the same excellence yeah. on a smaller scale. It still be fascinating for you know, young people like Hudson and Abby out there, because there's mm -hmm. a lot of them. Yeah. You know, that may even if they see this, I have a hunch that this would recruit interest Hmm. Anytime you see something done with excellence, like Sight and Sound Theater, people are like, huh, I wonder if I should consider doing that. Right. And I, it'd be fascinating to begin to harness that and catch that uh, for the yeah. body of Christ. And I see you as just a great leader for that. The way you lead hmm. these, uh, this cast and crew is amazing, Rich. I have been hmm. so blessed by your, your life, your manhood, your strength, your vision, your fearlessness in a time like this. Uh, the way you are just sort of rallying the troops to share the goodness of Jesus with the world around us. And just how mm. you're loving us here at Ellerslie and loving this community that, you know, Windsor, why would you care about Windsor? But you do. Mm. And I love that about you. And so, and by the way, if you ever get a chance to see Pilgrim, he's the king nah. uh, in Pilgrim. Uh, great job. Uh, oh, and uh, you're very but, encouraging. <laughs> but thanks. Thanks for what you're doing, uh, Rich. And I just, um, let me pray a blessing that would be upon great. it. Father, as we enter uh, into this time of seeing this production come to this community, Lord, I pray that it would be blessed and that yes. people would be changed. But Lord, more than that, I pray for everyone listening in that there would just be a rousing of each of us to mm. be allowing you to lead us and how we can share the goodness of Jesus with this yes. world around us, that we would not be inhibited by masks and social distancing, but that we would be bold I for agree. you and your namesake. Thank it's you. in the precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.